they actually just happened to the stock of Live Person. Here's a cloud-based software company that uses artificial intelligence to help its clients with customer relations management. Their tech lets you uh, make bots that can text directly with your users. I mean, LivePerson is one of the hottest stocks in the Red Hot Group. But on Thursday night, the company reported what was considered to be a disappointing quarter. Stock plummeted 24.5% on Friday for falling nearly 4 more percent. All right, uh, what went wrong here? While their revenue came in a bit higher than expected, Live Person had a larger than expected loss, and the guidance for both the next quarter and the full year was viewed as discouraging. Management's forecasting much larger losses than anyone was looking for, and the revenue number for next quarter was also a bit light. On top of that, live person announced that its CFO is stepping down, which is the kind of thing that Wall Street hates to see, especially when, the, when paired with a not-so-hot set of numbers. Then again, the stock's now plunged from $45 to $32. Maybe it's been overly punished. Let's dig deeper with Rob Lacosio. He is the founder, chairman, and CEO of Live Person. Learn more about the quarter to come prospects. Rob, welcome back to Mad Money. Okay, so Rob, let's just go right to it. Yes. Uh, I know that you thought it was a great quarter, and yeah. that was very clear. Uh, and I know that the conference call was filled with uh, positives. Yes. So uh, what happened to the stock? I mean, we put out that we grew 20% in Q4. That was 14% in 2018. We grew 20%. We got it 20 to 22% this year. And so we decided we're going to invest a little bit more in the company because we're a leader and we're going to invest in innovation. I think the shareholders thought we would take the – you know, take off innovation this year and just focus on uh, getting more leverage. We will at the end of the year, but we're leading the pack, and we have to innovate as we do this. Now, I believe I just spent, uh, I spent, read a great book by Dave Cody, yeah. uh, who is the former very successful CEO of Honeywell, and he's talking about that you need to be both short-term and long-term. Obviously, someone like Opco, which downgraded you to perform, is saying you are not giving us the short-term results, and they're focused – uh, on the first quarter guidance being below consensus. Was there a better way to telegraph this? Because obviously people who bought the stock ahead of the quarter have just been crushed. Look, uh, growing 20 to 22 percent this year, I think, is, is, is what people expected. And that's right. what we put out there. I don't look at intra-quarter what we're doing. I'm looking at the full year. But, you know, you know I've always taken a long-term right. perspective on the company, and we're going after a giant space. So the quarter in Q1 is going to be a little lighter than maybe they wanted, but not for us. It's we're looking at the year of 2020 to 20 to 22 percent growth, which is awesome. So off of where we were. Last so year. you feel that this is all organic, by the way. OK, we're not I, buying companies. We're organically growing this business. No, absolutely. But remember, you know, from the point of view uh, sure. of, of how you did the uh, I care tremendously about operating cash flow and the cash flow was light. As you know, J.P. Morgan saying uh, disappointing investments continue to drive uh, drive lower than capital profitability. Uh, it's been lower than expected profitability, and the OCF was light. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, absolutely, you're doing great in your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, the stock is saying that your eyes are cloudy. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I have to deal with the stock because that is the four walls of Kramerica, so to speak. Sure. So, what do we tell people that this is the right level? Yeah, I think they're going to see leverage. We told shareholders we're going to see leverage at the end of the year in the model. Um, we are boxing our, our investments this year. We're going to do mm -hmm. about $16 million in innovations. The rest is going to be about getting leverage off the bottom line. But I think we're a growth company. We're looking right. at a giant space. And so I care like you do about operating leverage. That's right. what we're going to focus on. And we're even setting in, internally like a rule of 40. We want to get to the rule of 40. Right. You've got to get to rule of 40 because right now you're not at the rule of 40. That's correct. But we've been really investing and growing and getting and, and, and going after a big segment of the market. Okay. So how about the um, live intent, uh, intent analyzers, which to me seems very proprietary? Yeah. So when I look at the space and we call it the conversational space, Jim, mm -hmm. It, I think it's going to have as much impact as e-commerce or search or social. I agree. And, and you and I have talked about this, the ability to talk to a machine and have a natural conversation. It's in the collective consciousness of people. We all believe the Alexa-type situation should happen with every company. Right. And we do it with Delta and T-Mobile and all these big brands. So what we're looking at now is how do we take that to the world? And Live Intent is a proprietary technology to look at the intense that a consumer is having with the brand. Right. Consumer says, I want to buy something. We have a way to analyze that and then use machine learning algorithms to then scale those conversations. Yeah, I mean, that's I, what this I, is about. Right. I mean, I kind of felt that it could be a competitive space and you've got to go for game, set, match. You have to, yes. Uh, and that, therefore, I just wish you had telegraphed it more because I think people would have been happier with it. I don't, you know, I can only telegraph so much being a public right. company CEO. CEO and, and basically, we use this year to say we're going to be a growth company. Right. 20 to 22% is awesome. 
We're going to basically box our, our investments in innovations, mm -hmm. about $16 million. The rest is going to go to get leverage off the bottom line. I think it's pretty good. It's better than pretty good because right. we're a growth company, like I said, once again, doing it organically. Now, CFO departing, uh, normal course of business? Look, I decided that I want to make a change in that department because I looked at that is a department full of data. Right. We are an AI company, and I hired someone who is a leader in the AI space who is, yeah. has a great pedigree in in uh, financial services and all that, and he basically is going to take this, but bring AI to that function. If we're right. going to be the best AI company in the world, I want all my leaders to be experts at AI, and he's one of those. And John okay. Collins is taking it over. So we had a plan. You know, we, we looked at that, and I just want to game change that role, too. Okay, so if you have bots, let's say you're in your China, that would, if people are showing up, let's say only a third of the people are showing up because of the virus. Bots can take that place, but I wonder whether some of your customers, particularly the airlines, are under such pressure because of the, of the virus that may not be able to spend as much as they did. The, the, there's a, the big pressure is this. We, for instance, in Q4, we signed a couple of healthcare companies. Yes. And they want to talk about defending themselves from Amazon because Amazon said they want to go into healthcare. Right. And the way they think they can do that is scaling the conversations they're having with their customers and creating a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. You go to a doctor. You have an experience with them. You capture that on a messaging platform. An AI will help you with yes. whatever is wrong with you. You want to process a bill instead of calling and being put on hold. You do that through a conversational experience. They want to game change it. And the only way they're going to defend themselves is to get into the conversational space. That's what they see. Right. And we're the company they're trusting to scale their operations with the conversational platform. All right. So who do you think you're pulling away from with this kind of thing? Because I think people are saying, listen, I'm a little frustrated. But maybe they shouldn't be frustrated given the moat that you're putting up. Yeah, I mean, I think the conversational space is going to be as big as search and social. I think you'll we'll see one day there will be a trillion-dollar company in this space, and I want it to be us. The things we're investing in right now and setting up for will allow us to do that, and I think that's what's important. So the Amazons and the Facebooks and Apples, right. they're in the space. Right. You know, Jeff Bezos made a big bet, obviously, in Alexa to say this yes, is the way did. it's going to be. But they can't just be Amazon and Alexa. It has to be other companies get access to that technology. And, and you that's can be that source. Who else is providing it? No, no and one we're is. one of the largest companies in the world to do this, even though we're not big tech. Right. We, we are large enough to go ahead and go after them. We are large enough to go ahead and define a space and win it. Okay, well, I would tell our viewers is, look, you know, the, obviously the stock's down over the idea of investing more, not because they failed, because the top line was terrific. It's, it's terrific. And that's what matters. That's Rob Lucasio. He is the founder and CEO of Live Person. Do your homework, take a look, understand uh, some of the analysts and how they feel. But the transcript is very positive. Man, money's back at the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.